Now, where do we get the, the modern American Presidio? Well, in 1846, between 1846 and 1848, the United States and Mexico fought a war. Uh, it had to do originally with the issues over Texas and the, the annexation of Texas to the United States and unresolved boundary disputes, which had created tensions between the United States and Mexico for many years. And as a result of that, and also there was a pronounced interest by many Americans in Manifest Destiny at that time, the idea that the United States should extend from coast to coast. So there were supporters of that idea, and also the interest of having naval installations on the western Pacific coast of, um, of North America. So the, uh, the, the naval commanders at that time, we had a squadron of vessels in the Pacific. These were five or six vessels at a time that would sail from friendly harbors like in Peru. And uh, the squadron was commanded at the time by Commodore uh, John Drake Sloat, who had standing orders to, if in case of war with Mexico, he should enter the harbor of Monterey and seize the territory, for, the territory of, of California for the United States, which is what happened in 18. And this is how we acquire California for the Union. It was a peaceful event. It's much celebrated in California history. And it also led to the establishment of an American military installation on what would be called Presidio Hill or Fort Hill, which is where the current American military installation is located. That uh, we acquired that property because when the town was uh, seized, even though it was a peaceful uh, event, the United States was at war. and. The army and the, it would, the, the went up to the top of the hill and uh, I don't know, 400 yards or so up the hill, and they built an earthwork fortification, a coastal defense fortification that they put some um, cannons on, and that was intended to protect the the port from naval attack. So this installation, which was begun in 1847 by the Navy, and was finished by Third Regiment of uh, Artillery of the United States Army was completed in 1847 and it was called Fort Mervine. So in other words, a military reservation was set aside on that location in order to protect the town from naval attack. And that installation was maintained until about 1852. Other events in California history had by then overtaken events in Monterey and that of course was the famous gold rush. Uh, by this time the, uh, the war with Mexico had been concluded. The territories of California and Arizona and New Mexico, the modern states, were uh, ceded to the United States. And the gold rush had begun. And that, that was a seminal event in the history of California because it shifted the focus of political attention, political and economic attention, to the Bay Area, San Francisco, and the gold field. And uh, Monterey, which had been the capital of Spanish and Mexican California and was the seat of American military government for the first few years, of the state's history as an American enterprise was no longer really that necessary f to maintain as a garrison town. So by 1852, the, the troops had left. A few of them had uh, been volunteers. A lot of the volunteers were more interested in making their fortunes in the gold mines than they were serving out their enlistments. So a few of them left perhaps a little bit early. But by 1852, the, uh, the stockade had been essentially closed down. And it was reoccupied briefly during the American Civil War, the last months of the Civil War. But essentially between the Civil War and the turn of the uh, 20th century, it was all but abandoned. Now, the, the military maintained the property. Uh, occasionally there were calls for the, from the city to, to use the property as a city park or something of that nature, but the Army always turned down those requests. It authorized right-of-ways for the railroad and roads and things of that nature, but it didn't do anything with the property until about 1902. In 1902, in July of 1902, President Roosevelt declared the end to the Philippine-American War. This is a war that had been going on as a result of the Spanish-American War, which had been uh, initiated in 1898. And this is a long, complicated story re related to the history of, uh, of Cuba and uh, the, the, the Cuban insurrection that had been going on for m many years. And uh, the Americans became involved in that war. And as a result of that war, again, our naval forces in the Pacific under Commodore Dewey landed in Manila Bay, defeated the Spanish fleet. And as a result of that, the United States eventually acquired the Philippines. Spain uh, ceded the Philippines in a peace treaty to the United States, but an insurrection had, had been going on against the Spanish, then became an insurrection against uh, the United States. And we were at war with the Philippines for several years. 
This required an increase in the standing army of the United States. So in 1900, Congress authorized a permanent increase in the size of the army of 10 regiments, five artillery, uh, five, excuse me, five infantry and five cavalry. These units would fight in the, the Philippine-American War. And then once the war was winding down, it actually would go on for many years, but officially it was ended in July of uh, 1902. We, needed, we had new requirements then. We had an overseas empire, so to speak. Uh, we had acquired Puerto Rico, Guam, the Philippines. We annexed Hawaii at that, that time as well. Uh, and there was still Cuba to be concerned with. So with, for all these reasons, the United States needed new military installations, especially on the Pacific coast. And it looked around and decided that uh, Monterey was a good location because it was near San Francisco, which had been the port of debarkation for the forces that were sent to the Philippines. Railroads were installed by that time, and the Army, of course, realized that it had property in Monterey. So it hadn't been using that property for some time, but it decided this would be a good place for the troops to rehabilitate. So in 1902, September of 1902, the lead elements of the 15th Infantry Regiment, fresh from combat in the Philippines, arrived to carve out an encampment for themselves on the top of Presidio Hill. This would eventually become the parade ground of the post. What they did was they made an encampment and they started building the garrison of the Presidio Monterey around their encampment, and then eventually that became the parade ground. So construction would take place between 1902 and 1904, and they would build about 12 barrack buildings around this parade ground. Then they would start on the officers' quarters, headquarters, a few other buildings of that nature. Eventually, another unit would arrive to assist them, and this was a famous unit called the Buffalo Soldiers. Some folks may not know that between the American Civil War and the end of World War II, African Americans served in segregated units of the United States Army, generally under white officers, and they were called Buffalo Soldiers. And this is an honorific title that was derived probably, it's not really certain who first came up with the term, but probably Native Americans used it to describe dark-skinned soldiers with curly hair, which they associated with the buffalo, and they found them to be fierce warriors. So the, the buffalo soldiers were always quite proud of that title. So the buffalo soldiers arrived to help build the Presidio. Now, they had also come from the Philippines, and they had left their mounts in the Philippines for their replacements, because we had ongoing operations there. So they arrived in, in Pacific Grove, and they set up an encampment near uh, China Point, which is today's Hopkins Marine Institute. They probably were bowing to the mores of the time. They didn't set up their camp with the 15th Infantry Regiment. Instead, they marched into the Presidio each day, and they helped construct the, the barracks. But one of the interesting things that happened while they were here was they received new mounts. So they had a bunch of new recruits and a bunch of new horses, and they had to break those in. So this uh, created quite a spectacle for citizens of Pacific Grove and Monterey, who got to enjoy the free rodeos for several months of the year. One of the interesting facts about the Buffalo Soldiers is there's four barracks that are built higher up the hill behind the officers' quarters, and they have historically been called the Buffalo Soldier Barracks because the first unit to be quartered in those four barracks were the Buffalo Soldiers. And another interesting fact about the history of the Presidio is there is a small military cemetery on the property, and the first uh, person to be buried in there was a Buffalo Soldier, Private George Johnson of the 9th Cavalry. There are several Buffalo Soldiers buried in that cemetery. So when the uh, Buffalo Soldiers received new orders, they, uh, they eventually moved out. They, were, they moved out in 1904, but before they did, they had an opportunity to, to patrol uh, Yosemite and uh, Kings Canyon National Parks, which at the time, were, there was no National Park Service until 1916, and one of the routine operations of the cavalry back in those days was to help patrol the national parks. So that was one of the, the activities that they, they did while they were stationed here. Now, the first units that all, that all were stationed at the Presidio Monterey in the early years, they all were involved in action in the Philippines. The first three units that were stationed there were the, uh, the 15th Infantry, the 20th Infantry, and the 12th Infantry Regiment. The 12th Infantry Regiment was somewhat famous later on because it would include a young officer named Lieutenant Joe Stilwell, who would eventually become Joseph Stilwell in World War II and would command the China-Burma-India Theater. And he's very famous here because he was the first commander who would start Fort Ord, get Fort Ord going in, the, in 1940, and of course was famous because he was a major commander of World War II involved with Chiang Kai-shek and saving Chinese divisions, and that's a whole other story. General Stilwell has a, a house on the Presidio of Monterey that was where he was quartered when he was a lieutenant in the 12th Infantry, and it's always been called Stilwell House, and it has a little stone marker out in front, so anyone who gets to uh, walk around the base can see that. <laughs>
other interesting things about the, uh, the post were the, the unit that's most historically associated, the combat unit that's most historically associated with the Presidio of Monterey is the 11th Cavalry Regiment. The 11th Cavalry Regiment is kind of a storied regiment in Army history. It had its origins in the Philippine-American War. It was one of those regiments that was newly authorized for a permanent increase in the standing army. It did fight in the Philippines. It later served it to help pacify Cuba because Cuba was an administrative issue for many years after it was liberated from Spain. And they also had uh, some, they, they participated in General Blackjack Pershing's famous punitive expedition into Mexico in 1916, which had to do with, of course, the Mexican Civil War and uh, Pancho Villa, one of the rebels and uh, uh, bandits, uh, Americans consider him bandit, he was a rebel bandit. He uh, had raided across the U.S.-Mexican border in New Mexico, the town of Columbus, uh, had killed several Americans, um, burned and destroyed a lot of property, and so an expedition was organized to chase him down. The 11th Cavalry participated in that event, and in the course of their maneuvers, they uh, conducted one of the last combat charges of a cavalry unit in the United States Army history, when they surprised an encampment of Viistas who set out to get away, of course, and the cavalry said, charge, and they went after him. Uh, so that's one of the more interesting facts about the 11th Cavalry. So after these events, after World War I, which the 11th Cavalry missed out on, the United States kind of went into a period of isolationism, and the post became home for the 11th Cavalry, which arrived in 1919 and was there until 1940, the headquarters were there until 1941. This is known as the quiet years of the Presidio. The units were not in action. They, didn't, uh, they weren't sent out. They, they, they were quartered there. Mostly what they did was they trained. They practiced the arts of uh, horsemanship. They went on parades. They played polo, which was a big event for the cavalry, of course, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of citizens of Monterey who grew up in the 30s remember the cavalry era very fondly. The first opportunities they had to see horses or perhaps ride horses. Sometimes the troopers would let the kids ride on the horses. We uh, actually have a collection of paintings that was done by an artist named Dorothy Stofi, who made a donation to the, to the Presidio Garrison of a uh, collection of paintings that were based upon her reminiscences of the cavalry training in Monterey. So they're actually now in the headquarters buildings of the Defense Language Institute, and I always encourage people to see them if they have an opportunity.